Lynn Summerford was given a 99-year prison sentence without the possibility of parole for attempted murder in 1992. He was unjustly sentenced, not given the opportunity for his witnesses to testify. Many sentenced for first-degree murder have gotten way less time in prison. He is now 76 years old and has been in prison for nearly three decades. I played the part of Glenn around 2004 on Animal Planet, not knowing the injustice of his imprisonment. I contacted the governor of Alabama asking for his pardon. No response. He is incarcerated at Bullock Correctional Facility, Highway 82, East Union Springs, Alabama. His prison ID is AIS 00098-0070. A cry of injustice needs to be made by the public so this man can spend what time he has left with his family. He does not deserve such a long sentence having never been proven guilty. Free Glenn Summerford. In the depths of the Appalachian Mountains, oh, God. a community of churchgoers is rocked by scandal. One of their own they shall take up surface. is suspected of attempted murder. It's your time to get yourself right with God. His weapon, grab that big one. Oh, God, no. A serpent. Rolling Hills of Northern Alabama. 36 year old Darlene Summerford was praying for a miracle. She'd been bitten by a caged rattlesnake. The emergency was more than a freak act of nature. In her call for help, Darlene said that she'd been forced to handle the viper at gunpoint. There, go. oh, there she is. Darlene intended to escape unnoticed from her attacker's snake. Oh, God. Oh, I've been bit by a snake. Okay. What's your name? Oh, I think I'm gonna die. Calm down, calm down. Her getaway plan had worked, but she was not out of danger. Okay, you don't short a breath at all? All right, double count some oxygen here, okay? Slow deep breath, darling. You open your eyes for me? Open your eyes, wide open. All right, take an ID and okay, darling? The venom had been in her system for more than 24 hours. All right, let's go. The local medical center was ill-equipped to treat her advanced condition. Darlene had to be airlifted to the University of Alabama Hospital in Birmingham. The Reverend Glenn Summerford, a spiritual snake handler and Glenn. Darlene's husband, learned of Glenn. her condition the next morning. Glenn. His mother and sister delivered the news. Glenn, wake up. Wake up. What is it? It's Darlene. She's been snake bit. What? She's been snake bit. Where is she? Birmingham. They flew her to the hospital there. Where? Birmingham. Summerford raced to the hospital 120 miles away. Next to his side was an unlicensed pistol. When he arrived, he was greeted by police. Word had leaked that Summerford was responsible for provoking the dangerous strike. Sir, I need you to shut your vehicle off. I need you to step out of the vehicle, sir. What's going on? Step outside of your vehicle, sir. Turn around and place your hands on the bed. 
Guys, partner! Don't move. Don't move. While his wife recovered... Put your hands on your head. Glenn Summerford was questioned by police. He was later brought up on charges by a grand jury. Sir, you're under arrest. I was stringing for the New York Times, and um, the paper had asked me to cover the trial of a snake handling preacher who had attempted to murder his wife with rattlesnakes. Dennis Covington spent three days in a Southern Appalachia courtroom listening to both sides of the story unfold. Please state your name for the court and jury. Darlene Summerford. The events leading to the fateful snake bite would come down to the preacher's word against his wife's. And what is your relationship to the defendant? He's my husband. Darlene described the days leading up to the emergency as her week of hell. But her marriage to the minister started out on a more divine path 13 years earlier. Glenn Summerford was an ex-con who sought salvation in a religious faith unique to the South. Thank you, Jesus! Thank you, Jesus! He soon became the community's minister of the Church of Jesus with signs following. The congregation was small. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord today? But devoted. There's probably only about a thousand people in the country that actually go to these services and out of that number probably only about 10 percent actually handle servants the first thing you notice is the music music is incredible drums guitars cymbals voices careening up and down the scale uh, there are no hymn books uh, everybody knows these these songs by heart <laughs> Praise God. The services were based on one particular passage from the Bible. This is what Mark wrote down. This is what Mark wrote down. The passage in Mark says that these signs shall follow believers. In my name, they shall cast out devils. Hallelujah. Praise God. Healing the sick, casting out demons, speaking in new tongues. <laughs> taking up serpents and drinking poison. Thank you, Lord! They will dance with them. They will drape them uh, over their shoulders, around their neck. Thank you, Jesus! Thank when I talk to some of the members of the uh, church, in my name, they shall take up serpents. I would ask them, you know, what, why do you do this? And uh, I would ask them, what does it feel like? And their answers seem to me to be so genuine and thoughtful and it says they shall drink any deadly thing and it shall not harm them hallelujah i asked glenn if he had ever drunk poison and and he said yes and i said well how about darlene did she ever drink poison and he said when she was living right she did which always struck me as kind of an odd answer when she was living right she drank poison Hey, Darlene. Darlene was also known for her snake handling skills. She'd been bitten only once in 13 years. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord! Thank you, Lord! Her relationship with the snakes and her husband would be the issues at trial. In the weeks prior to being airlifted to the hospital, Darlene and Glenn began having serious problems. All right, let's dependent on you. Glenn talked about quitting the church because he and Darlene were backsliding. Backsliding is a term in the South that means that you have essentially fallen from grace uh, by behaving in ways that aren't Christian. And um, there's a saying among the snake handlers, you know, we get saved hard and we sin hard. Glenn had taken to the bottle. Drinking vodka screwdrivers morning and night. Darlene told me that she knew there was going to be trouble 
after he broke her mother's jaw with a vase at a family dinner. I can't live like this anymore! You need to get yourself right with God. Especially with me! What are you talking about? Glenn suspected Darlene of infidelity, which he adamantly denied. No! No! Oh, yes, you have! No! Darlene accused Glenn of having an affair with one of his parishioners. What are you doing? Start praying, Darlene. Start praying! <laughs> You're coming with me. No, Glenn! Why are you doing this to me? Darlene, I told you. It's your time to get yourself right with God. Oh, Glenn. No. Oh, Glenn, no. yes. Oh, Glenn, Why are yes. you doing this to me? No, Glenn. No. Darlene, you can choose a bullet. Or you can choose a bite. Oh, no, Glenn, no. No! Oh, God. No. Stick your head in there. Oh, God, no. Oh, God, no, <laughs> Darlene Summerford was bitten on her left thumb, but as jurors would hear later, that was only the... Darlene Summerford testified that her husband forced her to put her hand into a box a containing a venomous diamond bag. You can choose a bite. Oh. 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 <laughs> but it wouldn't be the last snake she would have to handle. He told me to put the lid back on that box. And then he told me, he said, get that other snake, you know? Take the lid off that box. <laughs> Where's your faith, Darlene? Where's your faith? Faith without works is dead. I don't want to die. Open the box. Open the oh, box! God. Open it! Grab that big one. But don't bite you, Darlene. I'm going to live. Praise God. It's a miracle. I didn't bite you. Oh, God. Oh, it's a miracle. Oh, God. Oh, God. Darlene testified that she passed out that night. The next day, she said that Glenn promised to take her to the hospital. Slow down. I'm getting sick again. Well, good, Darlene. It's about time you're finally going to die. She was essentially his captive. Here, Hannah, let me slow this thing down for you, okay? He was armed, and, and he kept promising her that he was going to take her to the hospital, but he never would. He took her to the video store, he took her to the liquor store, and I don't think she really thought that he was going to kill her. Until late in the game. Get that car. Get out. Get out, I said. Get out. Not again. No. Come on. We're going to try this one more time, Tarly. No. Come on. Oh, oh you're going to know what pain's like. She was taken to the snake shed for a second time. Go on in there. Go on in there. Go on in there. Please, You better start praying to Jesus, Tarly. Oh, please, don't do it. Because this time you're going to die. Yeah, this time you're going to die. Open that box. Open that box, I said. Let me see what kind of faith you got, Darlene. Put your hand in there! The second bite came from a cane brake rattler. Its fangs sunk deeply into the back of her left hand. The venom shot to her brain. Darlene was dying, and Glenn knew it. Right! Right. But he wanted to cover his tracks. According to her testimony in court, he pointed a gun at her head and forced her uh, to write a suicide note that he was dictating. I love you. Do what daddy says. The letter was addressed to the couple's teenage son. 
Daddy's asleep. I tried to fix things, but it just didn't work out. Glenn, stop. I'm going to throw up. Just keep on riding. Daddy's asleep. He don't know what I'm doing. I went out and got myself snake bit. Glenn, no, no more. Just keep on riding. Glenn's asleep, and he don't need no help. And I don't need no help. Now, you and Daddy live right, okay? Go on. Finish it. Come on. Get up from there. Come on, get up from there. No, no. You're cool with me. Ultimately, he passed out on the couch watching TV. Darlene remembered drifting in and out of consciousness. husband slept, she called her sister. It's me, Darlene. I need help. I've been snake bit. Call an ambulance. No lights, no sirens. I don't want to wake him up. Darlene was finally able to get help and spent 12 days recovering at the hospital in Birmingham. While Glenn was being interviewed by police for domestic abuse, right, let's see what we got here, guys. Investigators confiscated his snakes with the help of local animal control officer Steve Grimstad. He had a cage that he'd built that had four different compartments. We had to take the snakes out of the cage and, and put them in small boxes. The confiscation was the first of its kind for the animal control officer. I didn't have any snake equipment. Uh, we, uh, I used a catch-all pole that we use on dogs. It's the only thing we had that we could use. We'd have to take one snake out at a time uh, because they would tangle up together. 17 of the 22 snakes were poisonous vipers. It was nerve-wracking. It wasn't real fun. All of them were seized as possible evidence for trial. Either side could request the snakes responsible for the bites to be entered as exhibits. And the ambulance got me to the hospital. They saved my life. Darlene had finished with her account of what had happened to her during her week of hell. I was sure I was going to die. Thank you very much, Mrs. Summerford. But the defense had not yet spoken. Counselor, your witness. The serpent handler's attorney would not only try and discredit the wife's story, he would present an entirely different account to the jury. Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning, Mrs. Summerford. Uh, no! Darlene Summerford testified for two hours on how her husband forced rattlesnakes to bite her twice. Put your hand in there! And then he forced my hand in the box. The testimony was riveting, according to Judge Loy Campbell. Bit my thumb. She sat up there and, and told it, uh, told it very, in a very straightforward manner. 
she made a very persuasive witness. I'll show you a photograph, Mr. Summerford. The prosecution had its say. Now it was the defense's turn to speak. Can you describe for the court what you see in that photograph? That's me with some rattlesnakes. And what are you doing with these snakes? I'm holding them. Glenn's defense centered around photographs that Darlene carried around in her purse. And the fact that she carried photographs of rattlesnakes, including one of her favorite, the defense made a big deal about that because they were trying to portray her as one of the foremost snake handlers in the Southeast. You don't look frightened in this picture. The defense contended that Darlene had a morbid fascination with snakes. Their account was that Darlene had waited for Glenn to go to sleep before going to the snake shed alone. The defense claimed that she had picked up the dangerous snake in an attempt to commit suicide. The suicide note not only confirmed this, it provided Glenn with an alibi. Call your next witness, counselor. But a surprise witness would present them with yet another version. The woman was a church member and claimed to be an acquaintance of Darlene's. What did Mrs. Summerford tell you about the snake bite? I asked her what happened, and, and she told me she got snake bit. And, and I said, at church? And she said, no, at home. And I said, how come? And she said, I got Glenn drunk and went out to get a snake. Her testimony kind of sent the courtroom into a buzz because what she said was that it was Darlene trying to kill Glenn that had resulted in the bites. And did she say that her husband had forced her to put her hand into a box of snakes? No. And that Darlene had waited till Glenn had fallen asleep and then gone out to the shed and gotten, tried to get a rattlesnake out to put on his neck to bite him, but she got bit in the process. After two days of testimony, the jury deliberated five hours before reaching a verdict. Ladies and gentlemen, have you arrived at a verdict? Yes, we have, Your Honor. Defendant will rise. We, the jury, find the defendant, Glenn Summerford, guilty of attempted murder as charged in the indictment. I think that's what turned the jury, was that curious suicide note. That's right. That's right. Keep going. Yeah, go on. Finish it. Daddy's asleep. Daddy's asleep. And he don't know what I'm doing. Daddy's asleep. Glenn's asleep. Glenn's asleep. Daddy's asleep. I like that part. Why would she continue to say that? I mean, it, it makes sense that if he were dictating that to her, that's what she would be writing to cover him. There you go. That's good. Keep on running. Finish it out there. They didn't believe it was a suicide note. Alabama state law has an Habitual Offenders Act, mandating three strikes and you're out. The judge gave the reverend a stiff sentence. He believed her, and I believed her. He was flat out trying to kill her. I had a, only a choice of 99 years or life. So I gave him the lesser sentence. The man of God would be punished by the law of man. Glenn Summerford was transferred to the Alabama State Penitentiary to serve out his sentence. Darlene Summerford moved out of town, leaving behind the Church of Jesus with signs following. As for other snake handling churches in Southern Appalachia, they still hold services. For believers in the power of good over evil.